okay so if no one is volunteering then then let me let me revise it for <clears throat> for all of you someone should have volunteered because it's for your benefit but uh, okay and I'm, I'm sorry for my voice please bear with me it's my throat it's not it's not well from a few days but i hope what i'm saying is you can understand my voice right <clears throat> am i am i clearly yes yes okay great okay so in the last class we we began with studying understanding restriction enzymes specifically endo like the two categories in which uh, like two types of restriction enzymes which are endonuclease and exonuclease and as we know that endonuclease cleave or cut the dna from anywhere within uh, not from anywhere like there are specific sites that they recognize but it's within the uh, within the sequence but exonuclease cleave it from the uh, outside from one or the other ends of the of the dna now for this specific uh, function of theirs restriction enzymes are also known as molecular scissors right so using restriction enzymes we can cut dna at specific locations so that's one benefit of having restriction enzymes and what we basically want to do is we want to cut our desired gene from anywhere put it in a plasmid and then transfer it to a host organism where we can clone our gene so that's the whole idea that's why we are doing all of this and now the point is uh, when we make a plasmid uh, why should any cell like any bacterial cell just take it up because we will first make the bacterial cell competent now competent cells are those cells which can take up foreign dna or plasmid because that's also a foreign dna from its surrounding inside the cytoplasm so that makes the job easy now how to make cells competent by the heat shock method and uh, using divalent cations okay so by treating with divalent cations and giving heat shock the small small pores in the bacterial membrane and wall cell wall opens momentarily and that time is enough for our plasmid to enter into the bacterial cell now the idea is okay if it has entered into the bacterial cell how will we know it like how will we get to know that yes the plasmid has entered and it is expressing so before going there i told you specifically about some uh, restriction enzymes like uh, hind2 and ecor1 so it comes from uh, how it, how they are named is the first letter uh, is for the name of the organism from where it has been derived like ecor1 the eco is for e coli r is that strain ry13 in this case and one is the order of discovery or isolation so this is the first restriction enzyme which was isolated from the r strain of e coli similarly hin2 is from haemophilus influenza d is the strain and 2 is the second enzyme to be isolated from this particular strain correct oh sorry this particular strain i also told you that there are more around 1000 more uh, restriction enzymes that we know of and we have isolated now all of these different restriction enzymes have different sites at which they uh, recognize or at, at which they bind to the dna and cleave the dna like they cut the dna <coughs> i'm so sorry so taking advantage of these specific sites we can decide which re which restriction enzyme we want to use for any experiment of ours or anything that we want to do so whichever enzyme suits our purpose well we will take it right giving an example of this gene which is marked here in green if you if i want to isolate this part and clone it then according to this schematic i will be using the enzyme hin2 because it it cleaves it will cleave here and here right so i will get this clone now i told you that restriction enzymes the recognition sites at which they cut the dna 
they are palindromes so these sides you read it anywhere uh, like uh, any direction they read the same for example this is a palindrome that we came up with atg cat if you read it from this side again so 5 prime to 3 prime direction also reads the same and 3 uh, sorry and in this direction also it reads the same right atg cat so atg and cat now how restriction enzyme cuts is also very interesting because they do not make a clean cut right from the center or anywhere they cut on two opposite strands so this is one strand and this is the other strand on both the strands they will cut between the same bases so here here they are cutting between c and a so on this strand also they will cut between c and a only but the way they do it they leave some flanking ends so i explained to you that this kind of a region sticky end is left okay and this unbound bases are like sticky ends which we can use to now ligate our um, sequence of interest to in a plasmid or anywhere else okay so this is what we covered in the last class so is the whole uh, recombinant dna technology clear to you all the components are clear to you because now the last part of this chapter is basically to put all the components together and start from the beginning make a recombinant dna and then put it into a host and get the expression result like get the desired gene product that's what we are going to do in today's class so first tell me is the scheme the whole overall component is clear to all of you yes sir yes sir yeah okay very well so just to put now let's let's start with putting things into context so we studied all the players all the components now in today's class uh, today is 30th right yes so in today's class let's begin with so you will help me <clears throat> so i have i have a a dna let's say this is the dna piece that i have and i am only interested in this much part of this dna which i want to clone so from here till here i want to clone this part this is the gene of our uh, this is the region of interest so i'm writing it r o i region of interest okay and this is a foreign dna now what i have to do first what is the first step tell me yes sir cutting the dna perfect and what will i use to do that sir uh, we'll use restriction enzymes uh, Rest uh restriction enzymes perfect now when i will cut this dna what i will do after cutting it sir we will uh, attach it to the plasmid of a dna vector perfect so let me also make a plasmid here for you and i told you that plasmid is round right so uh, let's say this is our plasmid that's also double helical but or uh, let me try it if i can make it double helical i'm not very good with art very bad job but i hope you understand this is a dna right so this is our plasmid and the plasmid here is working as a we are using a plasmid as a yes so i'll say it's a it's a vector dna for me so we have two components the foreign dna which is the first component and the plasmid dna which is the second component now you are saying that i have to use restriction enzyme okay so i have to cut this dna i i somehow figured out that the restriction enzyme that i want cuts the dna here and cuts the dna here let's say so but i also have to cut plasmid though no? don't you think so yes or is sir. it not important why why i have to cut the plasmid sir uh, we have to incorporate the foreign DA, the roi the uh, what is the full form of roi sir i forgot 
region of interest the region of interest sir uh, so that uh, it uh, it is incorporated in the plasmid vector uh, so that it can be uh, introduced in the host organism yes perfect you are uh, yes very good and um, uh, like so when i'm using now just a question in the same line so i'm using a restriction enzyme okay so the restriction enzyme that i will use to cut my foreign dna will i use the same restriction enzyme to cut the plasmid or should i choose another one a different restriction enzyme what do you think so it will be same sir yes maharaj perfect why it will be same because sir, both of them are dna only no but that's that cannot be the reason right all restriction enzyme cuts dna so all... that that's that is the main reason uh, sir but uh, sir i don't get it sir why why not endonucleus so sir will not, will it so so when we are cutting plasmids so will there be a difference between endonucleus and exo endo, exonucleus is yes. no no i'm just so in case of plasmid there's no concept of endo and endo. there there is something that goes at a sequence and cut it simply so it's like a bangle it's like a circle a closed loop so forget about endonuclease exonuclease first your answer, the answer to your question is there's no difference for a plasmid okay second but will i use the same restriction enzyme or should i use different or can i use different enzymes or i must have to use the same enzyme so you said we have to use the same restriction enzyme suppose i am using eco r1 so i will use eco r1 both for the foreign dna and the plasmid that is what you are saying my question is why why can't i use eco r1 for uh, my foreign dna and hind uh, 2 for my plasmid what's the problem is there any problem yes sir because sir, we have to use the same restriction enzyme to why pop- because sir we are that uh, specific uh, restriction enzyme will cut the will cut both the foreign dna as well as the plasmid sir so sir it needs to be but, common for both of them but why that that, that to we all know that it will cut both for that matter hind 3 will hind 2 will cut the plasmid and eco ri will cut the foreign dna or let's switch it hind through hind 2 will cut the foreign dna and eco r1 will cut the plasmid medina let's say there are sequences for both present but why we have to stick with the same one that is the question so you are not answering that you are saying that they have to be the same that is what i am also asking why they have to be the same why not different if it is about cutting we can use anything to cut i am saying that you are using a scissor to cut the paper i am using so a because blade. sir there is a specific recognition sequence yes so so what so there is so, so sir Uh, eco r1 can only uh, for example sir hind 2 uh, always cuts dna at a specific uh, at a specific sequence of six base pairs so sir eco r1 will have a different so uh, what's the problem a, both of them say... will have a different cutting sequence sir uh, the for, uh, sir may uh, it can be that, uh, that uh, eco r1 cuts the dna a little more than hind 2 so it will not be suitable for the for, to incorporate the foreign dna no that's not the case for that matter if i just cut it at one place i can op- so it's like a loop right look at this look at this loop so let's say the smart watch is the loop this is the loop right you can see the loop everyone yeah is it visible the loop yes sir now if i cut it open at one place i can just make it big i can put anything in between and make it a big loop what's the problem i just have to incorporate my dna in the plasmid it's it's not a hard and fast rule that if i take this much amount of piece out i can only fit in this much amount of piece back this is what your worry is maraj yes sir that's 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 okay you can once you open once you cut open a thread let's say you have a bracelet okay once you cut it open you can op- you can stretch it and make it sim- linear no now you can make any no- any bigger circle you understood what i'm saying yes sir it's not hard and fast dna is not made up of metal that you cut this thing and you can only put that thing in 
DNA is flexible. It's a molecule. So once you, even if you make just one cut and it's open, you can put something in. That's what I'm trying to say. So why it has to be the same enzyme? That's also not the reason then. So what has been taught to you? What do you know? Is this chapter done in your schools or no? People? It is sir, done, sir. But sir, so no one told you this. Going on, sir. It's going on. So they never told you, Maharaj. No, sir. They didn't, sir. Then how will you? All you have to do is now to remember and uh, mug it up, whatever is in your notebook. Then, if you don't understand, why are we cutting the plasmid? Don't you think it's important? Because now, do it you is, understand? Sir. Do you understand my question? Do you understand yes, the sir. importance of the question? Why the restriction enzyme has to be same? So your worry was very logical and valid, which I said that that's not a problem. We can increase the size or let's say make it big, not a problem. For that matter, do you think then when we were when we were fitting in hair only, so there, there was a normal plasmid, we fitted an antibiotic resistance gene plus our gene. So of course, the plasmid is going to be a little bigger now, right? Of course, there has to be a size to which we can we can increase it. A very big plasmid will not very go, easily go inside the bacterial cell. But still, it's a lot. Okay, there's lots of space you can increase. So what is the what is anyone else would like to try or Maharaj? Now do you think why what is the reason? The reason is uh, this. Yes, tell me. I gave you a hint. This is the reason. Can you now justify? Yes, sir. It is, is it because of the palindromic nucleotide sequence? All sites are palindromes. For eco R1 also it will be a palindrome. For uh, HIN2 also it will be a palindrome. The sequence length can be different, but it will be a palindrome. <clears throat> sir, I don't know, sir. Okay. It is because when you will cut with the same enzyme, you know. So let's let's say this is for, for example, it's just an example. This is for eco R1, let's say. Eco R1 cuts between C and A on both the opposite strands. So you will see on both the strands what will be left a G which is unpaired and a C which is unpaired, right? Yes, sir. And on the other strand also a C which is unpaired and a G which is unpaired, right? Yes, sir. If we use any other enzyme, let's say I use HIN3, then it cuts between A and T, not between C and A. So it will cut here and it will cut here, right? Now the yeah. now the sequences which will be flanking, which will be the sticking ends, they will be different, right? So we want same sticky ends on both sides so that we can stick it into the, we want the same sticky end here also and here also. Then only it, it will bind, no? Don't you think so? so? Yes, sir. If the sticky ends are different, then how will our foreign DNA so after, after cutting it, let's say it looks something like this. I have cut it and it's looking something like this, okay? Cut it, so th this has opened now. So there is something here and there is an end here. But if this end, now I want to incorporate my foreign DNA at this location, okay? But if this end and these two ends, the sticky ends are not same, will they bind? No, no, right? Exactly. So that's why we want to use the same restriction enzyme so that it creates the same sticky ends in our foreign DNA, in our gene of interest, and also in our plasmid so that they both can bind together. Correct? Do you understand now? It is not about the space. It is not about how much they will cut. It is about where they will cut at what sequence and what kind of sticky ends these enzymes will leave. Okay. So write down. Is it clear now, Miraj? Now you can go back and ask questions and seek for clarifications if you wish. But you know now, right? When you cut yes, by the same restriction enzyme, the resultant DNA have the same kind of sticky ends and they can be joined together easily by the same DNA ligase. Okay, so write down. <coughs> Both foreign DNA, or I don't like the word foreign DNA, you can write both uh, the DNA of interest and the plasmid vector 
both the DNA of interest and the plasmid vector. has to be cut by the same restriction enzyme has to be cut by the same restriction enzyme so that so that the same kind of sticky ends the same kind of sticky ends can be created the same kind of sticky ends can be created in both in both and now the next step is that <clears throat> the foreign DNA <clears throat> the foreign DNA and the plasmid the foreign DNA and the plasmid will be joined together using the DNA ligase, using the same DNA ligase. Using the same DNA ligase. Clear everyone? Yes, sir. Now after this, yes, sir. this what what does this become now what is this successfully after joining this becomes our recombinant dna correct and this we are going uh, to recombinant put recombinant dna yes and this we are going to put into a bacteria okay and this process by which we put it into a bacteria is heat called shock. heat shock no, but it's called transformation process yes, sir. we are transforming the phenotype of this bacteria by putting our gene of so i'm drawing it like this okay so this is here in the bacteria is our recombinant DNA. Okay. We have put it in. Now what happens? Let's say this is E. coli. What happens now? When this E. coli will divide, it will form two cells, right? One and two. And in both, what will happen? Uh, uh, it will get inherited, so the the transformed the transformed dna yes so we will have more copies right so multiple copies so cloning sir dna yes so this is known as the process of this is its own genome so when we are making more copies and both of these are same so here this and this are the cloned plasmids cloned plasmid vector which is containing our gene of interest and this process is called gene cloning is it clear everyone yes sir so this is the whole idea clear right now i also ask you to go back and read you have to draw this everyone or you have drawn one minute yeah please draw this and let me know when you're done <clears throat> i can have some 
warm water to help my throat. Okay. Should I go forward, people? Done? So always remember that if you do not cut your vector and your source DNA or your DNA of interest with the same restriction enzyme, you will not be able to create a recombinant DNA. So it's very important. In the first place, you have to use the same RE to cut both. Now you also know the reason why, because we want the same sticky ends to be present on both, correct? and it makes sense if you have a sticky end like this on one side then you would like to have a similar sticky end like this on the other side as well right then only they will fit together yes or no yes sir if you have any other shape do you think it will fit? If I have this sticky end on one side and on the other side, I have this sticky end. Will it fit? No, it will not be ligated, right? Simply. So here I'm just, yeah, here I'm just giving an example to understand, make you understand with shapes, but there it is the base, the base pairs. Okay. So if in one sticky end there is a e and g which are unpaired what you will like to be in the other sticky end e a c right then only it can bind correct because a binds to t and g binds to c and it can only happen if you use the same restriction enzyme to cut. So just remember that. So done, everyone? Shall I go to the next thing? Done or you are doing? Tell me. Done. Done, okay, great. So now I'll be talking about about gel electrophoresis. Now, these are all principles and techniques. Okay. Now, gel electrophoresis is a technique where simply we have uh, we have a medium, or what should I say? We have a gel which is made up of uh, agros. Agros is a polymer. It is a biological natural polymer and that polymer by increasing its concentration. So let's say polymers are just things like this, correct? Just imagine. So they are all polymers. Can you see? People? 
they are all thread like things right no yes sir now see what is the what is the pore size when i so this is let's say some concentration i have used some concentration of polymers now look at the pore size can you see here this is this big this is also big so the pores between the polymers when they are randomly just they are less in number do you see the pores are bigger now pores my pore, by pore i mean in between the space i am just highlighting all the spaces can you see there are big big spaces yes highlighted by this blue now let's say i use the same polymer but this time i am just increasing the concentration there are more molecules than they were last time it's the same polymer okay so there are many molecules so they will all just cross link with each other let's say here it's 10 uh, so here it's 100 so it will look more dense right correct everyone now let's see how, what is the pore size can you see the pore size now is very very small as compared to what it was before any pore size i take in which the pore size is big in general here or here case a or b first one right yeah. it's still the same polymer but you understand how by increasing the concentration making it more concentrated 1x 1x concentrated agarose if we make it settle and solidify the polymer it will solidify and it will have small small spaces in between so it will be bigger if we use more concentration the spaces after solidifying will be smaller correct so this is let's say 1x and this is let's say 5x concentration five times or one times the concentration so this is the same thing that we do with the polymer called agarose write down agarose is a natural polymer extracted from a seaweed extracted from a seaweed you know what are seaweeds these are the weeds which grow in the sea in the in the oceans they are small small plants so it's extracted from a seaweed and write down it provides it provides a sieving effect agarose provides a sieving sieving is like uh, the sieve the channi that we use for the tea and uh, like flour etc wheat flour etc it provides a sieving effect for dna fragments dna fragments of very varied lengths of varied lengths of or varied size or different size okay now what happens in this technique is that we know that <coughs> after uh, you took out dna from a cell and you know that which restriction enzyme you are using you also know that where it will cut and you also know now the, uh, that what will be the length of the in, uh, region of interest in that sequence that you want to put in a plasmid but when you will take a normal dna and cut it with restriction enzymes there will be other bigger pieces also right how will you separate your dna from the others through gel electrophoresis so it's like a gel when it so it it's a liquid when you heat it up then you let it settle in a mold and it becomes a gel it's very simple technology so at the very end there are these grooves they are called wells because they are grooves okay so if you look from the side i am making a side version as well you will see 
that where there are wells there are these there are empty spaces like this okay you understand so these are called wells or grooves now you can number it and then what you do is you load your dna all the dna in this because because you want to just isolate your size so this is a technique of <coughs> separation and isolation of dna fragments okay so let's say i put dna in the first well uh, however we always put a ladder now what is a ladder a ladder is a premix of different sizes of dna that we know so let's say this ladder which i am using it will show a band here for 1 kb kilo base pairs 1 kilo base pair means 1000 base pairs then it will be show for 2 kb so there will be multiple bands shown by the ladder so 1 2 let's say 3 5 7 and 15 and 20 kb kilo base pair you understood this is the reference this we already know this is prepared by companies and they sell it to you so this is just like your uh, reference now what is the charge on dna people negative it's negative so if i use if i connect it so this is kept in a liquid in a buffer which is a conducting liquid and i connect it to electrodes so if i put negative charge here and if i put positive charge here connected to a battery let's say okay then what will happen there will be a push and where will dna move dna will move in this direction right because it's negatively charged so it will be attracted towards the positive terminal of the gel right this whole setup is in a liquid conducting liquid let's say now we have already cut our dna and we know the gene of interest our gene of interest has a size of 5 kb let's say 5 kb this is our size gene of interest so any other thing if there is there are any smaller fragments uh, where will they be no oh, i i don't i did one thing wrong it will be opposite actually i made a mistake sorry it will be um, opposite so 2015 can anyone tell me why it will be opposite the smaller one will pass easily from any given pore right if the pore size allows if the pore size is big enough to let 20 kb pass it will obviously will be able to let 1 kb pass faster right so the smaller band will come here so if you if you get a band here which means this is your dna and we want our uh, interested size our size of like it's 3 kb let's say so if i get these are all the sample numbers let's say this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 now you have to tell me in which of the sample i have my gene so let's say i got this result in which all the samples i have my gene of interest if it is a 3 kb in sample 2 sample 4 and sample 6 can you see this am i making sense or i'm just speaking to screen yes making sense yes. right so this is how i will know that the gene that i wanted to cut and take out it's there in the mix and this is how i can isolate my dna of interest from everything so this technique 
is known as uh, gel electrophoresis so the largest band will be towards the well and the smallest band will be the farthest away from the <coughs> well okay these are all dna bands is it clear everyone yes sir yes sir okay so i think uh, so this part did you did you study from ncert and was it clear to you anyone has any doubt and how do we see it dna is not colored right my question is how do we see so we visualize by using uh, a compound a compound that gives us fluorescence that compound is called ethidium bromide so ethidium bromide binds with the dna any dna it just binds with the dna so you can write down uh, the dna fragments write down the dna fragments in gel electrophoresis are visualized by staining the dna with ethidium bromide ethidium bromide and so this ethidium bromide binds with the smaller groove of the dna you, you can just write the dna no need to know but if they ask you should know that there are bigger and smaller grooves in the dna they just bind to the smaller grooves just this you have to know you don't have to know any further detail so it binds to the dna now how can we see this by exposing it to uv light so the moment you will keep this gel in a uv chamber turn on the uv light you will see all these bands because ethidium bromide uh, radiates light uh, it, it's it can be visualized when you give uv radiation or uv energy okay so it becomes fluorescence in uv light okay now once you know that your dna piece is there what you will do simple you will take a blade literally cut this part of the gel out because you know all your dna is stuck in this part of the gel right which you want to put into a vector so cut this part of the uh, dna and then uh, you can take out this you can purify that dna from this part and that part is this process by which we can take out the dna of our interest is called elution e l u t i o n elution okay so you can write you can write the dna of interest can be eluted the process called elution can be eluted out and used to make recombinant dna correct i am just sorry i have a bad habit of writing recombination all the time i am just joining all the links together <laughs> is the process more clear to you now yes sir and you know how to make a recombinant dna now correct okay very well so please read this part the gel electrophoresis part from ncert you have to read this part and make your own notes to understand if you have any doubt please come to me so i've told you about uh, okay now write down a question which has come in boards many a times let's discuss this question now so the question is so this ethidium bromide is a stain for dna yes it binds to dna it's a dna binding agent and also one more thing thank you for reminding me ethidium bromide is carcinogenic upon long exposures what do we mean by that 
it should not touch your skin it can cause skin cancer so one should never touch ethidium bromide with the finger always put your gloves on when you're doing these experiments and you can understand why it can cause skin cancer because it binds to dna right it goes binds to dna then it uh, it, it it actually radiates in the presence of uv now the question is right on what are the features what are the features that has to be present present in the vector in the vector dna what are the features that has to be present in the vector dna to facilitate or to improve to facilitate the process of gene cloning okay this question can come in other they can twist the language and can ask in some other way but what they are trying to ask now the question is about the plasmid vector not about the restriction enzyme not about your gene of interest but about the plasmid vector what should be the characteristics so if i ask you <coughs> you always look for some characteristic in every carrier in every so if i ask you that uh, you are four friends you want to go out and you want to travel a long distance so what kind of vehicle will you choose a bus a bicycle an auto rickshaw or a car what will you choose pick bus car auto rickshaw bicycle long distance travel four people okay car right why why not bicycle or a bus um bus can yeah. be crowded yeah and uh, maybe there is no space in bus and uh, bus bus can be used uh it, it uh, the bus can be crowded and uh, maybe the four people no no it's your bus it's your, all the it's your uh, you have to choose one only four people will be there yeah only even yeah. if you choose a bicycle there will be four people on that bicycle if you choose the bus there will be four people on the bus it's your bus your auto your car your bike it's your plasmid vector no yeah, yeah. so similarly so what vehicle will you choose if you want to choose it for four people and a long distance travel car a car because you you must have something in your mind some characteristics if i say uh, you want to travel alone from your home to the nearest market to fetch a packet of milk then what will you choose maybe bicycle yeah right and if you if you are choosing for a whole class going for a picnic then what will you choose bus bus remember because it's it's obvious right because we need certain characteristics which will facilitate our need correct yes a bus will be too spacious for one person uh, four people even for a long distance travel so you will not you will say okay we can do it with the car and just to go somewhere near you will use a bicycle similarly there has to be certain features in a in a vector dna in the plasmid that will facilitate the gene cloning better now you tell me what would you like to have first of all so the answer is what would you like to have in your plasmid first characteristic feature you would like it to have a origin of replication because that is the whole fight we have started with right yes or no 
if you want to clone a gene we want to replicate a gene into multiple copies and if your plasmid itself does not have a origin of replication it's like your car should have a engine right to begin with if the engine is not working will you choose that car no it cannot even start so if a plasmid does not have origin of replication it cannot start replication right so it cannot replicate technically so whatever vector you are creating artificially or taking it from natural sources and then modifying it you will make sure that it has origin of replication correct so write down origin of replication it's, it's in short it is known as ori right it has ori <coughs> so it should have a origin of replication and what is the origin of replication can anyone tell me we have discussed this before <coughs> what is the origin of replication people quick what is origin of replication it is a sequence right down ori is a sequence from where replication begins so you can add you can just link any dna sequence with ori and that sequence will start replicating in a cell it is a sequence from where replication begins and any any piece of dna any piece of dna which is linked to this ori and any piece of dna which is linked to this ori can replicate within the host cell can replicate within the host cell so can you repeat from begin yeah that's a little difficult anyone can repeat from the beginning if anyone has written it completely first thing i said was that uh, origin of replication is a sequence from where replication begins right and yes, second i said that any piece of dna which is linked to this ori can easily replicate get replicated in the host cell okay and another thing is that it just it does not only tells you it does not only decides whether replication will begin or not origin of replication sites also control the copy number now what do you think is a copy number if you have used a photocopier machine you must be knowing what is a copy number how many copies do you want is a copy number okay so origin of replication different origin of replications have different copy numbers so they can not only start replication they can also decide how many times it will be replicated so what would you like a higher copy number for your gene which you are cloning or a lower copy number a um, higher yes so if you want to clone many copies of your gene you would choose a ori a sequence with a higher copy number now how do we know about this copy number same by doing experiments and figuring out that okay if this ori is used the number of copies that i see for my gene in the next uh, generation is this and for this ori it is more so we will choose the ori accordingly because that is also a dna sequence we can just cut it put it in the plasmid a plasmid is like a assembled lego house you can choose every component you want put it in the plasmid then once the plasmid is prepared then put it in the host cell and just watch the game so you are engineer you are engineering a recombinant dna for your benefit or for the benefit of human kind and just putting it so first thing that we see in a vector dna is the origin of replication so write down 
ORI also is responsible for or also controls the copy number of the linked DNA. ORI also controls the copy number of the linked DNA. And copy number is simply how many copies will be indicated. So, and last point for gene cloning, higher copy number is preferred. <coughs> for gene cloning, higher copy number is preferred. Okay. So this part is clear, right? Any doubts, people? No. No, sir. Okay. What is what is the other thing you would like to have in your vector DNA? I also told you about one thing, which is selection marker or a selectable marker. You can also write suitable marker, but you need a marker. What is a marker? That is again a, a sequence, a gene, which will tell you that your plasmid has been taken up by the cell and it is successfully cloning the gene that you want. So what will be a good selection marker? So basically what we are doing, we are transforming the bacterial cells, correct? We are making them have our plasmid. So what those bacterial cells that have the plasmid that we want to insert in the cells are called transformants. What are they called? So I'll go up and I'll just tell you that these, these bacterial cells are called transformants, not transformers or transformed transformants those which have our plasmid the recombinant dna are called transformants so selectable marker helps us to figure out that after we have <clears throat> done this experiment see in biology it's never going to happen even if you make the cells competent suppose you made 1000 cells competent gave them hot heat shock treatment and treated them with divalent cations and then you put your plasmid thousands
Hello, am I audible and visible, people? Sorry, I lost the connection in between. Am I audible? And yes, visible? So. Please let me know if my voice lags or something happens, okay? Okay, uh, just one second. Uh, who among you is the host? Someone among you must be the host. Can you transfer me the... It's Minashi. Yes, Minashi, you are the host. Can you transfer? Can you make me co-host? You just have to click on the three dots on my, on my screen. Yes, thank you so much, Minasha. Okay. Yes. Can you all see the screen, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. So, yes, what we were saying? Yes. Uh, so, second thing that we want in our vector DNA or the plasmid, I should also write plasmid here. Plasmid is also the fully prepared one. So, just an ambiguous one is selectable marker. So what do you think is the suitable selectable marker that I have taught you? It is antibiotic resistant genes, right? So mostly the selectable markers that we use, so write down, a vector DNA also requires a selectable marker a vector DNA also requires a selectable marker that helps in identifying and eliminating, that helps in identifying and eliminating non-transformants. Non-transformants are those bacteria which after everything that we have done still have not picked up or taken up the recombinant DNA that we want them to take up and clone. So how can we see? Because we also have put a selection gene in that plasmid. That is antibiotic resistant gene. Now that could be, there are many different antibiotics ampicillin, chloramphenicol, tetracycline, kanamycin, they are all different antibiotics. So you will see the name in NCRT. Okay. So you just put a gene which gives resistance against one or the other. And then after you have done the whole process, you have transformed. To check, you just put the bacteria in the plate. In that plate, if you put antibiotic, so all those which will survive are a proof that they have taken up your plasmid. That's why they can survive because they have the resistance. All those which do not survive and, and die, anyways, they did not have your plasmid, so they deserve to die. You, you don't want them to live. Make sense, everyone? Yes, sir. So that's called a select, selectable marker. So we use E. coli because E. coli do not have any resistance against any of these antibiotics. Naturally, E. coli bacteria does not have an antibiotic resistance. Different other bacteria already have some antibiotic resistance because remember uh, the first antibiotic resistant gene was isolated from a bacteria itself, which was Streptococcus pneumoniae done by, who did it? It is for him. Stanley Cohen and Herbert oh, Boyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So they isolated the gene from Streptococcus pneumonia, right? Yeah. Okay. So selectable marker is the second thing that we see that should be there in the in the in that vector DNA. What is the third thing that you would like to read? Now let's come to the business. <coughs> It should have a site where restriction enzyme can cut. 
Yes or no? And we just and how many sides do we want in a plasma in a in a vector? So in a linear DNA, from where we are cutting out our gene, we need two sides. Before our gene of interest and after our gene of interest, we want to cut and take it out. But how many sides do we need in a circular DNA? Preferably just one because we just want to cut it and open it so that we can put our thing in between. Remember I told Maharaj when we were discussing that it's not a problem. You can increase the overall size of that circular DNA, not an issue. Till it is in the limit where it can be taken up by the bacteria, it's okay. Yes? Yeah. So all we need to do is to uh, our vector to have one site, which is called a cloning site. So the site where restriction enzymes cut, where we put our gene that has to be cloned, where we insert it, is called a cloning site. So if this is a vector, so sorry. Not a very good vector though. Let's say if this is our vector, then in that vector, this is one site where it the eco R1 cuts. And there can be another site where in two cuts or another site where PST1 cuts. These are this, this is another just another uh, restriction enzyme. So if we are using eco RI, that depends on what we have used for our gene of interest also that it will cut here and it will open. Now, when it will cut here, we will put our gene of interest bet between, between these two fragments. You understood, right? Now the size will be bigger. Make sense, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the third thing that we need is a cloning site, right? Don't? A cloning site. So write down. <sighs> cloning site is the recognition site. Cloning site is the recognition site used by the restriction enzymes. It's the recognition site used by the restriction enzymes to cut the DNA, to cut the DNA. What is the problem? Okay, uh, let me ask you, what is the problem if our vector, let's say has two recognition sites for eco -RI? Why do we want it to have just one? Why not two? Let's say if there are two, let's say there is two and the second one is here. What is the problem? What is the problem? The problem is same that we encountered when we were cutting our gene of interest. Now, instead of just opening the vector, it will cut the vector into two different parts. So this will be one half and this will be other half, right? So we will yes. get the fragments of the vector, which we don't want. We just want the vector to be open so that it has two ends in which we can fix our gene of interest. So that's why it should not have two recognition sites, two cloning sites for the same restriction enzyme. Is it okay, everyone? Make sense? Yeah, okay. Very good. Oh, okay, let it be. So cloning site. So these are, uh, uh, next point, write down. Presence of multiple recognition sites, presence of multiple recognition sites within the vector DNA, 
within the vector DNA will generate multiple fragments of the vector DNA. Hey, can you repeat? Uh, having multiple recognition sites within the vector DNA, multiple cloning sites, or I'm using the word recognition sites, which is for the cloning sites only, because where you will cleave, there only you will put your gene of interest. So having multiple restriction, sorry, recognition sites will generate multiple fragments of the vector DNA. <coughs> okay. Is it clear, everyone? Yes, sir. What else do you want? What else do you want? So these are the major things we want, right? Anything else that should be there? No. I think. <clears throat> that's all now after understanding this thing that what do we need in our vector dna you should also know that there are this is not something new that we are doing like new in the sense uh, we have taken this idea from the living world itself you know that uh, Gene transfer is not uh, that some, something which you can only only we can do through biotechnology. Gene transfer anyways is done in nature by organisms. So bacteria often do gene transfer from one bacteria to another. That's very, very common. I'm, when I'm talking about gene transfer, I'm not talking about transferring the gene through from parents to offsprings. No like from one organism to another, just, uh, just uh, like that in the same generation. So that is done by bacteria, not very surprising. But do you know it is also done uh, from bacteria or viruses into plants and animals? Do you know that? Yes, no? Do you know that or you don't know that? So bacteria and viruses transfer genes. This is how viruses infect us. They transfer their gene into our cells and put that gene. I just taught you about COVID and AIDS, right? What was happening in AIDS? A RNA was coming in the cell. That's gene transfer only, right? Then that RNA was becoming DNA. Then the DNA was going into the nucleus and getting incorporated in our own genome. Now you can understand what if it was not going inside the nucleus and getting incorporated with our own genome. What if that piece of DNA stayed in the cytoplasm? What would have happened? <clears throat> it would have been degraded, right? In our cytoplasm. Yes or no? It is not stable if only present in the cytoplasm. Am I making sense? Because no one is responding. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So uh, many of these, so there is, there is one example. So I'm giving you a homework for today that you have to read about. Have you read about this bacteria called um, agrobacterium tumefaciens? Uh, 
agrobacterium tumefaciens. You have to read what is this. Agrobacterium gives you some hint and tumefaciens, the name gives you some hint. So what is this bacteria? And it, uh, what is its relationship with plants? Let me tell you uh, and how this has helped us to develop cloning vectors. How? So you have to read about this. Okay. And uh, rest you have to do is that's it. You just do this. And in the next class, I will uh, give you the whole process. We will, we will start from the beginning and go towards the end. And in one class, we will finish the process, how we will start from the scratch and make a re, uh, recombinant DNA. So everything that you needed, all the principles and techniques are now done. Please go back, read from NCRT. See if you cannot understand if if you cannot understand any given line. If you have difficulty with any line, come back to me in the next class and we'll figure it out. I'll explain it to you. So in the next class, I need one more class to finish this chapter. So please don't miss it. And I'll stop now for any questions if you have. We still have a couple of minutes left, I think. Yes. If you have any questions, please ask me. Okay, just one question. In your schools, do you you must be having biology practicals, right? Schools are offline, right? Now they are yes. offline. Yes, right? sir. Okay, perfect. So are you having your biology practicals? Yes. Hmm. So did they did they make you do DNA isolation from banana or potato or something? Yes, sir. Yes? Yeah. Who did it? Who did it? Minashi did it? From strawberry. From straw. Oh, wow. Wafi also did it from strawberry. Wafi, you did it from? Banana. Hmm. And Samaira? So from kiwi. Kiwi. Wow. So <laughs> any, reason, any reason behind these different, different fruits? Or was it? You can do it from any fruit. No, that's it should have just it it just should have pulp so it's very very uh, people do it from tomato meshed tomato meshed potato meshed banana the process is same you have to mesh so anyone would like to quickly in a couple of minutes tell me how did you do that anyone strawberry seems very interesting so who did it with drop strawberry mm -hmm. yes minashi what did you do Banana is like, uh, I did it from banana in my school, I remember, yes. So what did you do? Actually, I don't remember it properly, like we did it before, like many months before. Ah, see, so you were not at all, uh, you, you were not excited about, oh, we are going to, did you see the DNA? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah, let's go. How, how did it look? Could you see the double helical structure? Under the microscope? Uh, we, we did it in May or something. Oh, but in May you can see, no? It's not like in May, in the month of May, you cannot see under microscope. I can only see under microscope in the month of November. <laughs> Do you remember anything like they uh, they, they show they sh did, it, they, did they show you something under the microscope? Yeah. So did you see the DNA? Could you recognize the DNA? Did you know what DNA looks like in May? Yeah, it's double stranded. DNA is double stranded. So could you see the double strands under the microscope? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Okay. Uh, anyone? Uh, anyone? Who else did? Samara, you did. Samara, which fruit did you use? So kiwi. Kiwi, yes. How was the DNA of kiwi? Sir, I didn't see under the microscope. So what did you see? How did you know that there was DNA? There's like, the teacher said. There's like separation of something in the test tube. So teacher was just fooling you, right? All along. The teacher just did something, showed you some separation. Did you see the separation? Did you see something yes. separated out? 
Yeah. So what separated out? What did you see? So that I don't remember. So you don't remember what was DNA like? So you, you don't remember the hero of the movie, but you saw the whole movie. Now you say, I don't remember what who was the hero, how did it look like? But I saw the whole movie, yes, okay. Anyone who remembered DNA, who remembered seeing DNA? No, no one. But Minashi remembered seeing the DNA under the microscope. In fact, the two strands of it, right, Minashi? <coughs> I'm, I'm just being too harsh on you people. I'm so sorry. Just leg pulling. See, you can never see a DNA under the microscope. You can not see a single strand of DNA under any microscope in the world except for a electron microscope that again the electron microscope will not give you those double standard structures like uh, we look at it those are all um, solved on the basis of data the x-ray crystallography data we know that the structure of dna has to be like this that's how it makes sense the x-ray data makes sense you can never see it under the microscope forget about the two strands you will not be able to see you can see dna as chromosome but or you can see dna as a thread uh, I, I told you about bead uh, bead on a string structure right that was a electron microscope image okay so i think someone just fooled minashi and all of you so don't you doubt that whether it was dna at all right now think this food for thought think about it go back look at that experiment you must have noted it somewhere in your file or something which you have to submit i know that we don't care about these things when we are in school i also didn't used to care about a lot of these stuffs but it's interesting so what you saw was it actually dna and if it was uh, how